welcome everybody to Shop Talk. It is TGIT, and as always, my name is Beryl Steven, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Tamira Hamilton. Hi, Tamira. How are you doing tonight? Hey, girl. I'm great. How are you? Oh, my goodness. You look so beautiful tonight. Your face, you beat that very well, my girl. <laughs> it's the only beating my face will take. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. So we have an awesome show coming up today. Um, and we're so glad that you all have been able to join us. So we want to go ahead and kick it off. Um, you know, Tamira and I have been working together for the last year or so. And we've really uh, come to be very good friends. And as we've been watching this season of Scandal, we've noticed a couple of uh, trends as well as a couple of things to uh, discuss. So I think, Tamira, we want to have you go ahead and kick off the uh, first discussion about our lovely uh, redhead and our um, gladiator in charge, Miss Livia Pope. Oh, absolutely. It's so easy for me to talk about this because I have, unfortunately, extensive amount of experience with it. So a couple things. Um, we talked about it last week. And I predicted, and I think it's going to spill over into several relationships with Liv, as her dad said, re-entry can be an adjustment. And so she's been away for about three months, and she comes back, and Abby has this new role. These women have gone to school together, have worked together, but Liv was always in the spotlight. Liv was in charge. And now Abby has Liv's old job, for one, and she is trying to make a name for herself because, we, as we've seen, she even said to the president, not knowing my name is not okay. Calling me Red is not okay. I have a name, and I do a lot for you. It's not just about what I bring to the table. I do have a name. So I think that's really interesting. And one of the things we really want to bring to our office or to our audience, I should say, is dealing with workplace politics. Because as you and I were talking a little bit about in the green room, uh, for myself in particular, growing up, people were always very direct. So a lot of the innuendo, a lot of the maneuvering and the finagling that happens in the corporate workplace is very difficult for certain segments of the population. You know, I was brought up, get a good education, get a good job, go to school, not, you know, get a good education, get a job that's going to pay you in, eh, you'd be lucky if you'll be able to pay your student loan debt, and oh, by the way, you're going to walk around with a big X on your back because you're young, gifted, and black, <laughs> you know, and like, like I said, when you grow up and everybody's direct, you think that's how the world is, and you'll even see the double standard where people are direct with you behind closed doors, but then when you do what you see them doing, when you emulate that, then, oh my God, you better watch out. You're really, you know, making a bad reputation for yourself and all the stereotypes when you can say the exact same thing as someone else and even say it nicer, but because it's you, it gets blown so far out of proportion. And, and it's not even a matter of playing the victim. It just is what it is. So I'd like to really see how this plays out and how, you know, they portray it. Because, yes, we do know that Kerry Washington is, is black. It doesn't really seem to surface on the show. It's almost as if she's colorless. And interestingly enough, um, either her or the president were um, or originally slated to be basically of the same race. So either Kerry Washington's character, Liv, was supposed to be Caucasian, or the president's character was originally meant to be African-American. I can't remember which, which one, but I do remember hearing that. And so it'll just be interesting to see how that, that plays out because it is a, a reality, first of all, that all people have to deal with. And some are more mm -hmm. adept at it than others. I am not. <laughs> And that's why yeah. I really just decided to opt out of that game because I just don't, it, it's just too stressful. It's just too much. I, I personally don't really care for it. And every time you try to play by the rules, guess what? They change the rules. Right. 
And something else that I'll be interested to see how they play out is um, I've already started to notice that um, the, I guess responsibilities is the best word I have for it right now, but kind of the roles and responsibilities um, are very, seem to be very different, even though it's the exact same role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, normally one would say those are very big shoes to fill that Abby's got, that she's got that challenge ahead of her. It's almost as if, um, you know, it's just like when you, when someone gets a promotion to another position, if they've been in it for a while, you've got that challenge of coming in and people having that expectation that you're going to do what they did uh, when you have, when they have to realize that you are your own person, right? And right. that you are your own individual and you have your own ways of doing things. And so I think Abby's challenge is going to be getting the president and, and the rest of the cabinet in the White House to recognize that she is not Olivia. She is not Miss Pope. Um, she is her own person and that she too is very talented and very, um, you know, very, very intelligent and can do the things that they need to have done in her own way, that it does not have to be the only the Olivia Pope way. Oh my God, I absolutely love that. I mean, in Robert Greene's The 48 Laws of Power, he, he, he touches on that, you know, never step into a big man's shoes. And I think often for many of us that those big shoes are our own last success and having to mm -hmm. do, do it again. And I think a lot of people, I know I've been in the position where, where you fear that, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just made it through this. How am I going to do it again? And you're, you're afraid right. to, um, I don't know that you're afraid of success. It's just this big looming fear of you know how hard it was to do what you just did, and now you've got to somehow work up the magic and make it happen. Again, being up against your own numbers in my former corporate life is something that cause people to move around like every every year or two and that's how you kept an X off of your back was to move around every year or two because it was you know hard to to nail you down when you're when you're constantly in movement the object in movement stays stays in movement right uh Tamira I have to ask you what do you have what color do you have on your lips you know it's one of the colors and you know with lighting and everything I'm not able to just reach it but it's from the lip palette, um, Sweet Revenge, the essential lip kit. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, the first row, um, a very matte. And then I put Gossip, one of my favorite mineral lip shines from Lala, from Motors by Lala on, on top of it. Um, so I'll have to put it in a blog post or put it into the Facebook group um, with, a, with a link because I, I just can't reach it right now. Cool. It looks spectacular. It, it looks yeah, really beautiful. about the lip it's, you know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what a little bit of color on your lips will do for a girl, you know? Um, so I think the other thing we wanted to talk about was the relationship between uh, Liv and our first lady, Melly. Um, you know, they're both very strong, smart women, and they're both talented women that want the same thing, right? Absolutely. And so, uh, what's his you know, name? It's Gerald. Grant right. Fitzgerald. Right. <laughs> they want the same thing. Yes, um, Mr. Fitz is, is definitely one of those things. But I think at the end of the day, being the smart, intelligent woman that they are, it's not just, you know, a Fitz thing. It's, it's, it goes beyond that, right, that they both want, um, you know, is, it, even though they may not look the exact same, they, they are at the end of the day, you know, many women in those types of positions want the same thing in terms of the end result, right? Um, you know, out of relationships, out of, you know, business relationships, out of life. And so, right. you know, you've got this, this kind of dichotomy of, you know, the first lady is Caucasian and Olivia is, you know, African American and, and you've got that dynamic. But then also, you know, I've, I've seen a sneak peek for this week where um, where Millie kind of runs up to catch up with Olivia and um, she kind of grabs her by the arm and Olivia gives her that black woman look like, uh, oh no, you did not just touch me. And it's a respect issue, that's right? Fun. So yeah, that look, that's that's the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, but I think it comes down to really being a respect issue and knowing your role, right? So, Absolutely. Um, you know, one, 
one, Livia re needs to recognize she is the first lady. Like whether you slept with your hus her husband or not, whether you like her as a person or not, she is the first lady. She's due the respect um, that is owned by that position, right? Absolutely. And then secondly, you know, um, you know, she, in, in turn, I should say, Melly needs to respect the fact that there is a time and place for everything. My grandmother always used to tell me, you know, you don't want to do anything that somebody else is going to watch you do and talk. Like, if you would ever talk about somebody for doing what you're doing, don't do it. Right. I like that. And so, you know, she's calling her out in the middle of the, you know, of the White House and being like, what you doing in my house? And it, that's just not the time and place for it. Right. Um, well, yeah. So I mean, be, don't forget the episode with the comments. It may have been last season about the help. Right. And how live, you know, so they, they subvertly put it out there about the, the, the racial differences and. You know, because the whole thing to me, honestly, reminds me of the whole drama over Thomas Jefferson and Sally May, May yeah. and Hemings, you know, America's biggest, darkest secret that they, they do not want to admit that, you know, many of us are walking around here lighter than our African predecessors because, you know, some of it was consensual and not all of it was consensual right. between the uh, Caucasian male and the African American female. And my grandfather always said that the only people uh free people in america were the african-american female and the caucasian male now however i don't know that having based on my experience in corporate america i don't know how true it is about the african-american female um you know and even to a certain degree i've seen caucasian females be be used up literally just used up and thrown and thrown away but for a little bit of time they get their their glory and they kind of kind of get a, their run of the house and to do what they they want to do, and so you see some of that volleying between uh, Melly and and Liv. And also, let's not forget that these women were friends. You know, right? Liv was hired to do a job. She did that job, and her and Fitz did not set out to. And I'm not saying it's right to have this relationship and quote unquote fall in love. So these women were friends and and then to play devil's advocate to melly okay it was all good when she was serving a, a purpose the purpose that you wanted it, it you were willing to look the uh, the other way and now all of a sudden what are you doing in my house like that's mm -hmm. just weird you know and very and really slate isn't clean because she was sleeping with the vice president so very very true so last thing before we Did I lose you? You're, you look Wrap a little... Up. So the frozen. wardrobe have been on point. And, am I here? I'm here. There you are. You're here. Ah, technical difficulties. You got to lot. You got to love it. And um, uh, for all of those that, that experience the technical difficulties, apologize. Um, shop talk, you know, we, we, we go with the flow and it kind of is what it is. You know, right now, full transparency, I'm sitting in my car, um, you know, uh, having just finished up a business meeting and um, and that's the beauty of this business is that it's able to go mobile with technology. So sometimes it's not our friend. Um, but um, but what I was saying, I guess, before I decided to freeze, um, you know, silly face Friday. But uh, but so no, what I was saying was the limited, um, you know, which is available on shop.com has a scandal line out this fall, which is phenomenal. So you can get your Olivia Pope fashion. Uh, at an affordable limited price um, and the great thing if you haven't checked it out before is that um, you know not only does shop.com offer you the cash back but also uh, there is a couponing feature where you have access to hundreds and thousands of coupons for each of the stores that are partnered with shop.com to allow you to take advantage of those coupons. So I know that there were a number of coupons available, um, Tamira, um, on both the limited through shop.com, but also I believe that we've got um, in the party, especially for our special guests, um, we've got a 10% coupon code as well. So make sure that you have collected your coupon uh, don't miss out on that opportunity because it is a fantastic um, thing to take advantage of. And that 10% coupon is for new customers. 
in its four motives cosmetics uh, motives by Lauren Reitinger and motives for Lala my face um, it, it won't apply to the to the limited but the great thing about um, I'll say shop with Tamira uh, is that it it is a warehouse for for coupons and you still can earn cash back at many uh, you know the vast majority of the stores that are partners on shop.com and don't take for granted that if there is not cash back on a store today that it won't be there tomorrow because the stores have their various strategies and I know from when I worked in travel in different industries you know you have your yield and pricing strategies where when you haven't hit certain numbers you drop prices or you you run different promotions and so um, our, our web portal is actually a part of those those strategies for for companies and it's really exciting to be able to take advantage of that as more people are going to be shopping on mobile and doing more uh, shopping from from the internet it's really, right. really exciting well it they looks like our time is officially up to say that we yes. own an internet mall without walls yes we do yeah. yes we do well unfortunately it looks like our time is up gladiators um, but we are looking forward to bringing you another episode of shop talk next week same bad time same good station um, and you know check us out in the in the Tamira's um, motives party and if you have any questions we'd love to hear your comments and uh, you know we'll see you guys next time Awesome. Thanks, Beryl. And uh, I'll you see you later, Tamira. Beautiful in your car. <laughs> Next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>